Hello, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Kim. Today, have I got a treat for you. There is probably no more requested recipe than my homemade bread. So today I am not only gonna give you the recipe, but I'm also gonna show you the secrets of making it. Now, here's the recipe and I'm just gonna walk it close to you because we're gonna work in the bake station today. So go ahead and write it down or you can go ahead and just stop your film right now and take a look at it. All right. Now, first secret to homemade bread. You have to make sure that you have warm enough water. So I always turn my water on and then what I do is I make sure that the water is, can, can you see me? That the water is comfortable to my hands. I try to make sure that it feels exactly the same temp as my skin. Oh, it's a little warm. Then we're gonna just cool it down a little bit with some cold. It's really, really important that your water is the right temperature. Because if it's too hot, you will kill that yeast. And if it's too cold, the yeast doesn't rise well. It will eventually rise, but not well. So we're gonna put in three cups of water, like I stated in the recipe. And we are gonna throw in some flour. Now, I told you about nine cups altogether, but we're gonna start with about three or four. It's not particularly important that you have the exact amount of flour. Just put some flour in. Cause we're just, right now, we're just gonna get that yeast going. So my scoop makes about a cup. So I'm throwing in three cups. And I'm gonna start out with this particular uh, paddle. It's called a paddle beater and um, our paddle attachment and then eventually I'm going to go to the dough hook attachment when the paddle uh, when the dough gets too thick so we are also going to use I use um, live yeast instant yeast from buy this at Sam's Club it's way cheaper and I like the way it works better for dough somehow my spoon got wet and that's not good you don't want water in your yeast so we're going to put in a tablespoon of yeast, we're going to throw in a tablespoon of salt. Don't forget the salt, it's really important. Bread is not very good without salt. And then, something that most bread recipes don't call for, half a cup of sugar. And now we are going to mix this. And then we're gonna add an egg and more flour until the bread is done. Pretty easy. I try to stay with my paddle mixer as long as I can because it's much faster than a dough hook. So, eventually what's gonna happen is the dough is just gonna, I don't know if you can see this, but it just gets so full in the bowl that the paddle isn't really doing anything anymore. So that's when we go ahead and switch over to the bread dough hook. And the reason that I don't particularly measure flour is every day is different. It really depends on the weather, you know, how humid it is, how cold it is. And you would think inside a house that everything would be controlled, but it's not. It really does make a difference. Oops, sorry about that. Stuck my arm right in the camera. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the dough hook now. And I tell people when I teach them, we're gonna watch for the dough to get little arms or a little arm at least. And when it starts to make an arm, 
Then we're going to stop and touch it. And it should be damp, but not stick to your fingers. Do you see how the arm is beginning to form right here in the dough? And that'll get much more pronounced. Oh, pretty sticky. I think we're going to add about a fourth of a cup more of flour just to make sure there's enough. Bread is pretty forgiving, so you know, if you get too much flour, it means that you have added, uh, it, the bread will come out kind of tough and dry. If you get too little flour, it'll come out flat and kind of shapeless. But it tastes good either way. <laughs> so, first question. What do I do if I don't have a mixer? For centuries, and I do mean centuries, People have been making bread without mixers. I take all the ingredients, put them together in a bowl, stir them up, and then we roll the dough out. This is a marble surface, but you can use any kind of countertop if you have, um, this is tile over here. So if you have tile like that or some kind of weird surface that doesn't knead well, you can use a baking sheet to knead on. And then we're gonna use the palms of our hands. The very and we're going to work the dough. See, we're just working the dough. We're working the flour in little by little. Now, I don't like to knead dough any more than I have to. A lot of recipes call for kneading it for 10 minutes or something. I very seldom do that because the longer you knead dough, the tougher it gets. So, you knead it just until it's got a nice consistency. I don't know if you can hear that. That's your secret, secret to success. It doesn't stick to my hand, but it sounds sticky. Okay, so we're gonna put it in the oven. And a few minutes ago, while this was mixing, I turned my oven on for about, I don't know, 60 seconds max. Because a warm oven will help the yeast rise even quicker. And then I added, I don't know if you can see that in there. I added a big cup of boiling water. And that helps bring humidity to my oven. And I will lay my hand right on the rack. Remember I told you I turned the oven on? And if it's too hot for my hand, if I just draw it back very quickly, that means the oven is too hot for the yeast. So it should be warm, but never hot. Now we are gonna let that bread dough rise for about 60 minutes, so about an hour. And then we'll punch it down and put it into a bread pan. And you know me and my old fashioned egg timer. So while we're letting the bread rise, I want to tell you a story. This, uh, this story um, is based off of Isaiah 45, verse three. It says, ask of me and I will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches and secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, I, the Lord, which calls you by name, am God. So, I don't know what you think of secret treasures hidden in darkness. Um, so I was asking the Lord, what exactly is that? You know, is that like money that's going to come from, you know, somebody? I live in a really old house, so maybe somebody hid money under the floorboards. We've almost torn every wall out of this house and replaced it. Never once have we even found a penny. But anyway, so I'm asking him, what is that? 
suddenly I'm in heaven with the Lord. And we're in this cave, long, dark cave, kind of lit by, I don't know, candles or something, you know. And uh, this huge, 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 huge angel, uh, glowing white. I couldn't really see his face. He comes walking in with this big gold strap over his shoulder, and he's pulling this treasure chest behind him. And he pulls it right up to the, by Jesus, kind of to the right, and bows really reverently all the way out the cave. Then here comes another one, puts it to the left. Another one puts it to the right, another one to the left. And, you know, this went on for, I don't know, there were probably a dozen of these treasure chests by the time all the angels got done. And, and so the Lord says, um, you were asking me about secret hidden treasure. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh my gosh, yes. And I'm thinking, you know, this is going to be full of like pirate's gold. That's, you know, really jewels and everything. And, and I said, can I open it? Can I open it? He's like, yeah, go ahead. And so uh, he said, in fact, you're the only one that can open it. I mean, between me and him, he met. He wasn't going to open it, only me. And so I ran over to the treasure chest and I flipped off the latches and I threw it open. And it was the most horrifying, awful thing I had ever seen, honestly. I mean, I have never been more horrified than what I saw in this treasure chest. And it was like this gray, not like fog, like, like soot, sooty smoke kind of deal uh covered the whole the whole thing and the treasure chest looked like it went forever into the ground you know like i don't know it was definitely odd and so there were these hands sticking up out of the gray and they looked like skeleton hands with a little bit of flesh on them i mean it, and they were filthy the fingernails were broken and dirty and there was dirt all over the hands and the skin was just like hanging on it. And I was just horrified. And I could hear groans and, you know, I just barely make out these weak sounding pitiful voices saying, oh, help, help, help. And it was like all I could do not to just slam the lid shut and run away but you know there's this thing in heaven that happens that doesn't happen here on earth as often where heaven grips your will you know and and God holds you to the thing he's going to show you even though you don't want to look and so I turned back and I looked at Jesus and I'm like like what in the heck is this you know and and he's like prophesy prophesy daughter prophesy the word of the lord and you know my mind is thinking i can't think of anything to prophesy over this i don't even know what i don't even know what this is but out of my mouth from my spirit came um words like um i have commanded blessing upon you and i will bless and curse you not um the Lord sent forth his word and healed you. God has got a destiny for you. When this enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard of the spirit of the Lord against him. And, you know, on and on and on, these verses were just like gushing out of me about um, destiny. And the last one was, Ask of me and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. And the whole time I'm prophesying, I am seeing like this hand coming up out of out of the I don't know smoky muck kind of crap and uh, it was horrible 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 uh, like the hair was like partially missing and they looked like their faces were all sunk in and their eyes were sunk in and kind of lifeless and um, they were filthy and, and the hair was all um, like just different lengths, I guess. And, and they were wearing like a, it looked like a gray kind of pillowcase sort of thing. And um, ragged and just awful, just skinny. 
But the more that I prophesied and spoke